What is methylene blue? A unique dye that's able to not only help mitochondria produce more ATP, but also can have benefits in improving cognition, enhancing energy production, and also reducing inflammation. Today, we're gonna dive into this unique molecule, how it works, what are some of the benefits, who can it benefit, and any potential side effects to watch out for, and why it's gaining so much traction in the health and wellness community. So what is methylene blue? Methylene blue is a dye, a textile dye, that was first used in medicine in the late 1800s. It was originally developed to help treat malaria and disrupt the way that parasites functioned and essentially caused them their biochemistry to disrupt and die. It is also used today and is FDA approved for treating what's called met hemoglobinemia. Met hemoglobinemia is a disease in which the iron that's within the red blood cells goes and is transitioned from Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. In the Fe3 plus form, it can't carry oxygen. And so our cells or our tissues are then becoming hypoxic and the oxygen isn't able to be delivered. Methylene blue is unique in that it works as a redox agent, meaning that it can carry electrons and become reduced and oxidized and go back and forth. So because of this unique capability, it is able to treat met hemoglobinemia and it's still used for that today. But why is it gaining so much traction in the health and wellness communities? Reason being is that methylene blue can help to reduce inflammation, enhance the way our mitochondrial function, and almost work as a bridge in dysfunctional mitochondria. A lot of people are suffering from mitochondrial dysfunction today, whether it be from heavy metal toxicities, herbicides, pesticides, alcohol and drug consumption, um, chronic inflammation can disrupt mitochondria. And so when mitochondrial are dysfunctional, not only does our ATP production go down, meaning the currency of the cells causing fatigue or causing other potential diseases, but when the mitochondria become dysfunctional, electrons that are flowing through what's called the electron transport chain can leak out and then create what's called reactive oxygen species or ROS. And this causes systemic inflammation and can damage tissues even further. So within the health and wellness space, a lot of people are realizing the dangers of damaged mitochondria and increased inflammation. And methylene blue works uniquely in this space in that it can help to facilitate not only the reduction in inflammation, but the enhancement in the way the mitochondrial function. So how exactly does methylene blue work to help improve the mitochondrial function? So the mitochondria have multiple complexes along it, and it creates what's called a protein gradient. In this protein gradient, ATP is produced. There are certain complexes along the way that can be specifically susceptible to damage, particularly what's called complex one and complex three. Throughout this process, there's a lot of different nutrients and cofactors required, such as CoQ10, NAD, B vitamins, carnitine, all the other nutrients that are really important and if can become deficient can cause mitochondrial damage. But what do we do in the situation where complex one and complex three are damaged and our cells are less efficient at producing ATP? That's where methylene blue comes in. So where regularly electrons would be leaking out and there would be less production of ATP in this space and increased inflammation, methylene blue is able to actually grab those electrons and work as a chaperone or almost a bridge taking them from say the damaged complex one to cytochrome C at the end of the chain and then allow the cell to produce more ATP. This is extremely unique in that again, it helps to allow the cell to produce more energy and reduce inflammation in the process. So within that as well, and this is speculative on my part, you would think that this would allow then with the mitochondria functioning better and reduced inflammation for the originally dysfunctional mitochondria to essentially heal itself because it's not being stressed as hard to be producing in a dysfunctional pattern. Also in that, we may not wanna use methylene blue every single day to allow the cell to have a hormetic response or possibly the, the benefit of realizing that it's under stress. So that's a little bit of a nuance in taking it and it can be part of the reason why a protocols are developed to not take methylene blue every day and to be on what's usually a five days on, two days off, or possibly only taking it three times a week. But again, a lot of people have mitochondrial dysfunction today because of the environments that they're exposed to, because of the stress that they're put under, because of the lack of nutrients, like previously mentioned, some of the B vitamins, amino acids, CoQ10, NAD, depletion of those can cause or facilitate mitochondrial dysfunction. And so methylene blue is really unique in that many people are seeing benefits of increased energy throughout, whether it be the brain, the heart, 
um, exercise performance. A lot of every cell in our body requires ATP. And so methylene blue can significantly help facilitate that ATP production. So how can methylene blue help improve cognition, which a lot of people use it for, for its ability to have a nootropic benefit to improve um, long-term and short-term memory, to improve focus, to improve verbal fluency, to improve all these things. Methylene blue can work in the brain as what's called a monoamine oxidase A inhibitor. So that means the neurotransmitters that are produced in the brain, such as dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, when they're released, there's an enzyme that breaks them down called monoamine oxidase A, MAO. So MAO breaks these down and renders them useless further, per se. And so when we reversibly inhibit this enzyme, it allows the brain to develop more in the synaptic cleft, or just for general sake purposes, higher levels of dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. Dopamine helps with motivation and focus and the feeling of reward. Serotonin, a lot of people are familiar with, with feeling happy. And norepinephrine gives that overall cognitive drive and energy production in the brain. So not only does methylene blue work to help improve cellular energy, but can also beneficially modulate some of these neurotransmitters that are associated with the feeling of feeling good, the feeling of being focused, and possibly helping in a nootropic context as well. So who could benefit from taking methylene blue or in what situations may methylene blue be useful? So if somebody is having chronic fatigue or they're having post-viral symptoms of fatigue or decreased cognitive abilities, or they're looking for a nootropic edge, whether in work or in sport, or possibly helping to improve oxygen utilization in a cardiovascular capacity, methylene blue can be useful in all these scenarios. Or if somebody has a history of mitochondrial dysfunction and they've lived a life of a lot of toxin exposure and they're looking to reduce inflammation and allow those mitochondria to heal and improve their energy and wellness in that capacity or to reduce inflammation, methylene blue may be a good option in these scenarios. But we need to talk about the side effects of methylene blue. Methylene blue is, again, becoming increasingly popular and available. So first of all, it's important to make sure that the methylene blue that you're getting is pharmaceutical grade. A lot of the methylene blue used in production and people are now relabeling as for human consumption or not for human consumption and they're selling it, it may have contamination with heavy metals, which would be, again, for reasons discussed earlier, extremely counterproductive to the actual purpose of it. So if you have methylene blue, that the idea is to help mitochondria function better, and then you're taking one that's contaminated with heavy metals, you're gonna be damaging the mitochondria further there. So making sure that you're getting a pharmaceutical grade methylene blue is very important. Also, it's important with the dosing. So methylene blue can inhibit what's called nitric oxide synthase. A lot of people are familiar with nitric oxide because of its ability to cause vasodilation, which in a lot of situations is very important and good because a lot of people have vasoconstriction, high blood pressure, and vasodilation is important for reducing blood pressure and allowing oxygen to perfuse to tissues and nutrients to be facilitated there. A lot of people um, like increased nitric oxide within the muscles because it allows for a better pump in the gym. And so methylene blue, when dosed at too high of a dose, can actually inhibit the enzyme that's responsible for creating nitric oxide, which can become very problematic, again, as it can increase blood pressure and inhibit some of the beneficial effects that can be um, achieved from exercise. And so if methylene blue is dosed correctly, that effect is virtually negligible. And then there can also be used things alongside to kind of counteract that. So if somebody was to misdose methylene blue to an extreme level in a person that was at risk for cardiovascular disease, could there be a situation where vasoconstriction was to occur and possibly predispose a myocardial infarction or heart attack? Yes, and so again, that's why it's important to make sure that the dosing is correctly. Also, methylene blue has the potential to interact with some medications such as SSRIs or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SNRIs, which are selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. These are used in um, situations of depression, anxiety, and mental health disorders. And the reason that you don't want to take methylene blue or you need to be very cautious when using methylene blue alongside of these is because they work in the same way. So those medications work similar to monoamine oxidase inhibitors. And also there are a whole class of medications called MAOIs, which do not take that with methylene blue as 
If there is too much serotonin, we can get what's called serotonin syndrome, and this can become extremely problematic. So it's very important to screen for that as well. Also, there is a genetic predisposition or um, problem called glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency or G6PD deficiency. It's not common, but it's very important to know if a patient has it because if a patient takes methylene blue at too high of a dose and they have the G6PD deficiency, it can cause the red blood cells to lyse or explode and can be very fatal in certain scenarios. So it's important to screen for the G6PD deficiency as well. But overall, methylene blue is very unique in that it has the ability, again, to reduce inflammation, to improve cognition through the enhancement of norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine. And in today's day and age where so many people are having metabolic syndrome and there's likely mitochondrial dysfunction, and we're starting to learn more and more about the mitochondria, and not only its importance in producing energy, but in cell signaling and controlling the way that genes are expressed, and having its own mitochondrial DNA, the mitochondria are becoming increasingly more important in the context of anti-aging and longevity for their ability to regulate those processes. And methylene blue is unique in that it can help with recovering the ATP production and the energy and improving patients' lives and the way that they feel. And overall, I would say it is a very unique and extremely beneficial compound, but should be used cautiously. And so, if you have any questions about methylene blue, if uh, I didn't answer any in this video or you want to learn any more about it, we have a an office here in Bellevue, Washington, where we do utilize methylene blue to help patients that are good candidates for it. And we can make another video on methylene blue. If I didn't answer any questions again, leave them in the comments and let us know.